Seems legit. It'll be lots of rust. <laughs> Wind's dying. wind at all. Hazard. Okay, let's get out of here. All right, we are off on our cross country mission. I'm filming this video dual purpose, obviously for the main channel testing, but I'm also going to post it on my iPad. So, I'll narrate the whole time, because you guys like it, but I'm probably going to get bored up here. Let's see. I'm going to gain a little bit of altitude, nice and slowly, because my objective today is efficiency. I want to clear these power lines, obviously. Uh, but I figured I'd just fly north and drain some battery out and then return back to home base um, and linger until it dies. That's the game plan. Yeehaw! Air is feeling pretty nice today. <laughs> I'm leaving home base on the second flight ever of the electric paramotor and I already have range anxiety. Um, I think I wanna clear these power lines and then I'll probably set up my camera, uh, my second camera, 
Oh, film a little uh, clip for the actual video for the main channel. And then I'm gonna set my cruise control. Even though I'm holding a nice cruise RPM as we speak. What's up, guy? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Got the dirt bikes fist bumping like no tomorrow. I'd come down and play, but I'm doing science up here, sir. We're range testing. much better than yesterday, which if you haven't seen, I did the first flight on this electric fare motor in the absolute worst conditions ever, <laughs> which was stupid. And I haven't posted the video yet in real time, but I'm sure I'm gonna catch a lot of flack for that. We're just barely clearing these high tensions, which is fine, everything's fine. I'm just trying to be super, Smooth on my throttle. Actually, let's engage uh, cruise control right now. I believe. Sick. Oh, I spoke too soon. Not sick. I thought it worked. Let's try again. I thought you just press and hold. There we go. Interesting. Okay. Um, now that we're on cruise control, I'm gonna pull my left trimmer just a tad, because we are torque steering to the right just a tad. Um, now I'm gonna set up my camera. I think I'm actually descending a little bit. cruise control, so I'll have to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, that's actually cool. It's showing my altitude of uh, 213 feet AGL. AGL, because it, uh, it starts when you arm the motor. Okay, so I'm gonna film for the main channel, so pardon me, I'm gonna repeat some information, but this is what I do. I'm going to do this maneuver, and that's to synchronize the cameras. And then I kinda like getting a uh, close-up shot, because it's nice and personal. So I guess I'll say some things for the main channel. Alrighty, so today we are doing the long duration testing, uh, best possible scenario in my opinion. I mean, we could get better with different technology, but with the technology I have today, I'm flying the Viper XC 16 meter, which is the most efficient glider I personally own. Um, I just took off from the field behind me on the electric paramotor, and let's talk about some data on our throttle here. I'm six minutes and 22 seconds into this flight. We're at 91% on our battery. I have my cruise control, which is pretty cool, set. So maximum efficiency for this testing. It's saying I'm at 200 feet. Um, for the nerds out there, I'll zoom in, but we're, we're at 5.7 kilowatts, 95.5 volts, 0.7 kilowatt hours, and about 60 amps and 50 degrees Celsius on our ESC. I think that, yeah, that's the speed control. Um, yeah, so that's our data. Basically for this flight, I'm going to fly away from home in a straight line on cruise control. And when I get somewhere close to 50% or when I start to get um, range anxiety, I'm gonna turn around and come back and then I'll get back with some percentage left and then I'll just hold around the uh, landing area until the battery actually dies. I don't know what's gonna happen when it actually dies. I'm sure they have some type of cutoff to protect everything, but I'm not sure how that actually works. So we're gonna find out today. Uh, but the name of the game for this flight is super efficiency. I'm gonna be on cruise control as long as I can. And I'm gonna make a prediction. 
I want to say I'm going to get about an hour. Um, maybe that's hopeful. I don't know. They claim 40 to 60 minutes. If I get an hour in my best case scenario, though, that's I'd be happy with that. I think that's uh, decent. Obviously, it could be better, but we'll see. Tune in for a, an update coming soon. <laughs> So that should be enough uh, narration that I can chop that up and put it in the, the actual video. And I just want to get some shots of this thing. It's in the back end. Um, the sunny side's over there. See if I can... Actually, I can't really... Let's take the throttle out of my hand, because we're on cruise, and <laughs> hold it in my right hand. Get some shots of the sunny side. Hell yeah. Get that beautiful green Viper XC up above. Get the beautiful B down below. Just complimented myself. Today is a good day. Uh, now I'm going to sit on the selfie stick and I, maybe I'll get a time lapse or something. But in other news, we're descending. We're at 120 feet. So that means uh, I have to disengage. Whoa, that was kind of scary. <laughs> to disengage the cruise control, you just get back on the throttle. Uh, but as soon as I touched it, it went to idle. So a little awkward, but it worked. I'm gonna clear these power lines up ahead again, so I'm gonna initiate a slow climb. Um, we are flying hypothetically into the wind this whole flight. I'd like to see another flag to confirm that that's still true. But uh, theoretically, if I turn around at like probably 60% or 55 or something, I'll have a tailwind to push me back home so I won't get stranded. That'd be mad embarrassing. All these guys, uh, the paramotor crew out here, I'm still kind of meeting and learning the locals, but uh, yeah, they all got their gas paramotors and they're all interested in this, obviously. But I would look like a total fool if I was like, hey guys, can you grab my keys and come pick me up because my electric paramotor ran out of electric. We're at a sufficient altitude here to uh, pass those power lines. Those were at 300 feet. Pretty cool, pretty chill. This is by far, uh, it's not a cross country paramotor because of its lack of duration. But if it was, it would be a very comfortable cross country paramotor because it's quiet very low vibrations and uh, cruise control so it would make a good cross-country paramotor if it could fly longer okay we're climbing a little too much I want to be as efficient as possible come to think of it I'm fairly certain uh, this setup doesn't even use uh, rubber motor mounts like all gas paramotors have some type of rubber isolator mount between the frame and the engine and the exhaust for that matter also um, but I'm pretty sure this is just hard mounted and it's just obviously smooth because there's one moving part okay I'm gonna try to engage our cruise control again there we go and now that I'm thinking of it we're doing science up here. There's a bird in front of me, and it looked like he was coring a thermal, so I'm expecting I might hit some type of turbulence, but we'll see. Since we're doing science, I gotta get some uh, videos on the phone of our throttle. That's nice. That's cool. Just showing the data. Uh, we are still climbing, which I don't want to be, so let's knock off the cruise control again, and 
see if I can set it better. Nope, I did it wrong. You have to, uh, to set the cruise control, you hold your throttle, press and hold the button until it turns yellow, then while pressing and holding the button, release the throttle, then release the button. If you release the button first, it doesn't work. Um, you know what would be dope? Now that I'm thinking of it, this motor is called, it's by the manufacturer, I guess, Open PPG, and the idea of Open PPG is open sourced. So like the code is online, I know nothing about that world. But what would be cool is because we have an altimeter on board, why can't we make altitude hold? Instead of cruise control, I want to press the button and have the barometer, I assume it has a barometer on board, uh, use my throttle to keep me at the same altitude. That would be sweet. Let's get on the other side of these power lines. We're at 76%, so I'm still gonna keep going north. Maybe I'll turn this into more of a circuit rather than an out and back. I'm just making shit up as I go along, honestly. Um, I was gonna say, I'm very scatterbrained right now. There's another bird in front of me. Um, I was gonna say, I switched to uh, all Mac officially. What's up, birdie? Hawk or a or something? Sorry, I don't mean to disturb you. You're cool. Very pretty. Anyway, um, I switched to Mac. I think it started with, I needed a new laptop. No, did I get a phone first? I think I switched to iPhone first uh, because I realized I was on a road trip and all my base jumping friends had iPhones and I was always that guy that uh, needed them to air, or, uh, what's it called? We transfer footage because I didn't have airdrop. So I got an iPhone and then my computer was kind of older and I wanted a new computer so then I got a MacBook Pro and I was very impressed with that for editing. And then just recently with the new house, I decided to get a new computer and I got a Mac Studio. So I'm all Mac now and uh, I honestly like it. I can't complain. But one of the cool things is on flights like these, uh, I can get B-roll with my phone like I just did. And we're descending again. It might be easier, honestly, just to fly the throttle. Yeah, I'm gonna grab the throttle and take it off the cruise. Um, it's cool to get footage on my phone because it's just like run and gun. It's always there. If something crazy happens, um, I can pull out my phone and get it. And uh, it makes it super easy when I'm at my computer hit airdrop, it goes straight to the computer and I can pull it right into uh, editing very conveniently. Um, so yeah, I like that. I should get some more B-roll. Of our electric power plant. Doing its thing. I should honestly get more uh, shots like that on my way back because right now the lighting is on the wrong side for my hand position. Let's see. We're hovering at 69 to 70%. We're at 16 minutes and 30 seconds in. I feel like uh, I'm going to get to the edge of this neighborhood over here, this big antenna, there's an old um, heliport that the army used and still uses for practice apparently. I think I should be fine on battery to make it there just to say I got there and then turn around and uh, start heading back. Because once I get back, I'll just linger around the... Uh, airfield until she dies and I can see the dust over there is blowing uh, towards me which means I'm still in the headwind which is what I want my return trip will be quicker I 
I will say, looking at those beautiful superstitions and this beautiful weather makes me wish I was doing a base jump. But paramotoring's cool too. It's my uh, first love. My main love. But base jumping's cool too. I'm trying to get uh, as much content for this electric paramotor as I can over the next uh, month or whatever for the giveaway. So anytime the weather is good, I'm trying to be out here testing, filming, getting content. But this morning I should really go out and get a base jump pretty soon because I am itching. It'll be fun. I put a poll on my Instagram. Plug the Instagram. Obviously, because you guys should follow me. But <laughs> I had a poll yesterday. Polls seem to perform really well on stories, but my poll was about the weather. And I mentioned that you know, the flight yesterday with the thunderstorm. But I was like, there's a thunderstorm and it's really windy. Should I fly? And it, it came out to be 50 50, yes and no. Um, fast forward, my most recent poll I just posted before this flight, I said, how long do you think I can make it last with the electric motor? 45 minutes, one hour, or an hour and 15. Currently, the leader at 49% is 45 minutes. Which, I don't know. I think we're going to probably do. Fingers crossed. Alrighty, I'm going to do a little narration update for the main video, not the uncut channel. Alright, status update, we are currently at 59, 58%. I made it to this old abandoned uh, heliport, which was kind of my goal. But at 58%, I'm starting to get range anxiety, which is probably a common theme for this motor if you ever take it far away from home. Um, so I'm going to turn around a little 360 here, and we're going to start heading back. And uh, hopefully I have a tailwind to get me there and not run out of electric. But we're at 20 minutes, 350 feet, uh, 89 volts. We've used 1.9 kilowatt hours, which the battery's rated for 3.7. So whatever that math comes out to be, I guess that's the 56%. Uh, but yeah, it's going good. We're still cruising. Um, I found that the cruise control, it works, but you kind of always set it a little high and you're in a slight climb or a little low in a slight descent. Um, so I've opted to just do it manually right now. And uh, I wish there should be a feature, which would be really cool. It has an altimeter, which it, I assume means it has a barometer. So there should be a way to have an altitude lock cruise control feature, which would be super cool. I'm sure somebody in the world can figure that out with the programming. But yeah, back to the uh, launch site. We'll orbit around there and we'll see what happens when it actually dies. We're at 55% and uh, yeah, I've got range anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm counting on the fact that uh, we have a tailwind and that this thing scales linear linearly. I hope I haven't made a mistake because now we're at 53%. Dead silence as I evaluate my life choices. I think we'll be good. I just have to make sure I make a direct path back home um, and not get lost. Woo, 51%, what is happening, dude? It seems like she's dropping faster, which is honestly a thing. Sometimes these don't go lin linearly. We're only at 22 minutes. That's not as good as I had hoped. Unless it's one of those things where, like, you get to 0% and then you just 
trail off there for a long time, but I don't know, dude. Like I mentioned, like this is my best case, um, but there could be better best cases, meaning I could fly like a uh, 24, 22 meter, whatever like the biggest size Viper XC or Viper is because the Viper is, I would say, Ozone's most efficient paramotor wing for sure. And um, a bigger size would obviously give me a, a lower cruise RPM. We have broken the 50% barrier, we're at 49. God, this is scary. Why did I go so far away from home? Now that smoke over there looks like it's going to give me a headwind. <laughs> God damn it. This is the thing, man. This is the Achilles heel of the electric paramotor. The one thing that it sucks at is duration. Everything else is really, really good. It's efficient, it's smooth, it's powerful, it's snappy. Uh, reliable, should be theoretically very reliable. I'm curious what uh, the most amount of hours someone has put on one of these motors. I, uh, I think I mentioned it. Well, I will mention it in current time. I haven't put out the first video on this motor yet, but the uh, battery, apparently you can get 500 cycles and it's supposed to degrade to 80% of what it used to be. So 500 cycles, is that's a lot of flights. Um, Assuming you fully cycle it, I wonder if you half cycle it, if that counts as a half cycle. But that's a decent amount, but then you're stuck with something that now instead of hypothetically getting an hour flight time, you get like, uh, I don't know what the math is, 45 minutes? <laughs> I'm not smart, people. That smoke is blowing in the right direction now. I think it was an optical illusion of... Uh, trying to trick me. 45, 46%. Honestly, uh, I wasn't going to do it, but I decided to bring my Mav Max, my go-to gas pair motor, because I figured after this test, I would want to go fly around. And uh, sure enough, I'm glad I brought it. Because I think after I land here, there's going to be lots of daylight left, and I'm going to want to go have fun. Let's get our clip. Oh god, the sun's right in the shot. That is garbage. over these power lines then I'm gonna scoop to the right just a little bit I want to get the angle with the sun a little bit better try to get some potential thumbnail shots Those are terrible. Um, I'm gonna look at my map. 
just to make sure I don't make any tactical errors here. We follow this road down, and then there's a canal that breaks off at that intersection, and then we go right, so I can actually, yeah, I'm perfectly on track. I know how to get back, I just want to make sure that I don't make a mistake and uh, go at all the wrong direction, because we're at 41%, 28 minutes. I would be really embarrassed if I had to call for a ride. It is very comfortable um, flying this thing though. Especially like the Viper XC16, it doesn't require um, a lot of power for cruise flight. It's pretty low RPM to begin with, and then you got this thing just whispering. Feels like it's not even working. Um, but the, as far as vibrations, like compared to a gas motor, it's significantly less. Like compared to a gas motor, you could say it doesn't vibrate at all. But if you really think about it, I can feel slight vibrations like in my back, and you can see like the swing arm is vibrating, which is probably just like propeller imbalance. Um, but if you put this thing on uh, uh, rubber mounts, I bet it would be like no vibration. Or if alternatively, if the prop was not balanced, if somehow you could balance it, but I don't know. People do that, but I kind of feel like there's no good way to do it. There's like dynamic balancing and static balancing and all that. And I don't know. I just try to, you get the prop from the factory and from there you assume it's balanced. And if you damage it, now it's out of balance. But I don't really balance propellers. The good news is I can see the LZ so I can fly a straight course there. We're at 38% though. Fuck. <laughs> this is scary. The scary part is I don't know what happens when you get down to like 10%. Like, I'd assume it's like a lot of electric things. Like once you get close to the, where the cutoff is, if you hit the throttle, it's probably gonna sag and uh, not be happy with you, but I don't know what happens. I want to stay at this altitude because I have that uh, set of high tension power lines way up ahead. So I want to remain fairly consistent. Actually, and also, probably once I clear those higher tension power lines, I'm going to want to gain a little bit more altitude and uh, collapse my selfie stick because at that point, I'm just going to be circling a field waiting for it to die, so I'm going to be at a good al altitude that wherever it dies, I can just come in and do a spot landing. So I'll gain a little bit once we get closer, and that'll use up a little bit more um, battery. But I want to save that until when we get there. We're at 31 minutes and 30 seconds. And I know I'm saying that, but you guys could probably look on your YouTube browser on this uncut video and see around about, minus the intro though. So I guess that is useful information. 31.43. I think I'm gonna make it. I'm not gonna get stranded and be embarrassed. I should do more uh, cross-country flying out here because this is kind of cool. The only cross-countries I have done are like from LZs to mountains, which is fine. Like on average, like this site to those mountains is like eight miles. It's about the same in other sites and the copper mine is about the same. Um, but my Mad Max, in one of the previous Uncut episodes, I talked about the fuel leak I had in my 
10 liter or 12 liter tank and I had to put the big boy, the 17 liter in. Now that I have that 17 liter installed and I have this Viper XC that I honestly don't fly enough, I should do some long distance flights. I just haven't really been that interested in it. Like, frankly, sometimes it's a little boring. It's more of like, a, in the moment, it's like the Type 2 fun. In the moment, it's uh, yeah, boring, you're just sitting there. But after the fact, you feel like you've accomplished something. You've got the distance. LZ is up there. I see no paramotors in the sky. I know the Trek guy uh, that was uh, failed to launch when I was taking off. Apparently that was supposed to be his first flight. So I'm curious if he got up. There are a couple other dudes out here though. I'm curious if they programmed anything, uh, like warnings, if this thing's going to start flashing or vibrating or something to tell me it's about to die. Honestly, I haven't even uh, looked at my GoPro footage from the first flight, but I bet the audio is pretty exquisite because I can hear my own voice pretty well. And the motor sounds quiet, so I bet this audio is pretty ideal. All right, crossing the power lines, we're at 30%. I'm just gonna get to the field here. I'm gonna film another update for the channel channel. And then I'm gonna enter my uh, holding pattern and I'll gain a little altitude and then we'll just burn this out. And what happens, happens see when she dies. I'm just thinking about dinner. I don't know if I want to go out for dinner. I bought a um, chicken and uh, Alfredo sauce and uh, like a chicken Alfredo. Like I got salad. I should go make that for dinner. That sounds really good. Is that dirt bike guy still there? No, that's a kid. I'll come fly with you later on when I get my real gasoline paramotor. I see a trike taking off. That's sick. The propeller wash just kicks up like a dust trail as he's, uh, what do you call it, taking off, <laughs> rolling, as he's rolling. Okay, let's get a quick clip of the uh, throttle data. We'll do a super quick update. All right, good news, we made it back to the LZ. We got a trike friend over here. Current stats, 26%. We're at 36 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, at this point, I'm gonna gain a little bit more altitude and we're just going to circle the field. And I'm gonna wait until this thing dies. And uh, what happens, happens. We'll see how it dies, what actually occurs when we hit 0%. And then I'll just glide in for a landing. But I want to get a little bit more altitude um, so I can make a safe landing. So I'm going to start a really slow climb up to, I don't know, five or 600 feet. This whole flight I've been averaging like 200 to 300 feet for reference. But yeah, that's our update. We made it back. We didn't run out of juice yet. Now we're just going to circle the field till it dies. All right. It's, uh, while well, we're at it. Motor in the sun. Hell yeah. Okay, I want to let's initiate a slow climb. 
and we'll use our cruise control. Okay, cruise control set on a slow climb. And I'm going to use both my hands to collapse this guy and stow it so it's ready for landing. how this uh, calculates the percentage because like my uh, Varla scooter is really wacky it instantly updates based on how much throttle input you're giving so if you're cruising it'll say like 80% but if you hammer the throttle it'll be like 20% and obviously that's not true but this seems like a similar thing because I just initiated a climb and now we're already down to like 13% and it's a really slow climb like I'm barely climbing and she's struggling which means I want to be like right at this LZ so if it cuts out I can glide and make it I'm taking note that the wind is the same direction as it was when I took off so I'm ready for this emergency landing I think I'm just going to leave it on cruise. I mean, I am climbing very, very slightly, so I could try to milk it and level off. I think I'll do that, but I just want a little bit more altitude, and then I'll uh, take it off cruise and milk it as long as I can by... Uh, actually holding altitude and not um, climbing. Trek guy disappeared. He's gone. circling launch we made it a very very slow climb to 448 feet we're at eight to nine percent battery I'm gonna keep this climb going just a little bit more just so I have a little bit more glide time um, and then I'm gonna bring her to cruise and milk it as long as I can and I'm in a very very shallow turn like this entire flight I haven't exceeded a bank angle more than like 10 or 15 degrees. We've been flat and level, super efficient. Forty minutes. I bet we'll get forty-five. is do we count the glide time to the ground or do we cut it when it uh, actually dies? Well, my earbud just must have died because all of a sudden it got loud in my left ear. It's annoying. It's like the uh, active noise reduction is either malfunctioning or it stopped working. It sounds like it's malfunctioning because it's louder than it should be. percent. My right arm is getting tired holding this <laughs> tip steering line. I did do shoulders today, so shoulders are a little sore. Okay, I'm taking it off of uh, cruise control because we've climbed to 600 feet. So I'm just going to do my best to hold about 600 feet here, which I don't know. I'm curious to see if the altitude is going to read zero when we land because I, I 
guess this might, yeah, this probably is 600 feet. I was going to say it seemed lower than that. Okay, I've already lost 50 feet. I just goosed the throttle a little bit. We still do have throttle response. But it's not wonderful. We're down to 72 volts. Need a little more gas. Because we're descending still. 5%. So I feel like I can make my orbit bigger. <laughs> These guys are probably just watching me like this fucking guy. Crowding up the airspace this damn electric fan. Okay, 500 feet. I don't want to go much below 500. I've lost 100 feet, so... I'm adding more power and it doesn't feel like it's adding anything. Yeah, I'm squeezing more and more. <laughs> I'm squeezing more, trying to keep it at 500 feet, we're at 3%. And she's not really climbing too good. 2%. Pretty soon I feel like I'm going to be at full throttle. 1%. We're at 1% in 44 minutes, 23 seconds. I got a trike. And battery dead at 44.30. Oh, and the screen turned off. Crazy. <laughs> okay, that was, I, what did I say, 44.30? That was uh, when the power cut off, and the last like 5%, it really, really started to sag and uh, not give me power. Um, so, I don't know. You guys can count the glide time if you want, or not. Trek's not doing a touch and go. <laughs> and I missed my spot landing, but that's okay. <laughs> This timer, 4533 to the ground. All right, so that's our data.